How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Mother Spongebob Thousand and let's get straight into things by talking about our next potential major Northeast Snowstorm. So let's move forward with the GFS model and as you can see by the time we approach March 19th to the March 20th time frame we see a heavy amount of snowfall right up along the Interstate 95 corridor cities like Washington DC, Baltimore, Philadelphia, New York City and even further northward into Boston and we do see that this system is quite a bit um, is does have a decent amount of strength with it. Its millibar pressure is around 990 um, millibars, which is pretty powerful and definitely powerful enough to bring heavy, uh, heavier amount of precipitation over a pretty large area of the Northeast. As this snowfall you see right here from the GFS model um, could easily dump anywhere between 6 to 12 inches of snowfall. There is, of course, a decent amount of cold air that's allowing for this precipitation to fall in the form of snowfall, which is definitely something we don't see very often during the month of March but it certainly does happen as March could still bring significant snowstorms at times to the northeast and this could begin a pattern where the temperatures will be colder than average and we could potentially see maybe even more snowstorms after this one if this were to come for fruition because but um if we were to continue to move forward the GFS model expects this jet stream dip to just stay over the northeast for quite some time and we could see several clipper systems move through the midwest and northeast bringing additional snowfall as we approach the late part of march it could warm up but we could see another pretty big jet stream dip by the time we almost approach the april time frame so i'll still say that winter is likely far from over for um people throughout the eastern half of the united states it will be quite warm this week going a little bit further back we see that there is a strong ridge so we should see temperatures anywhere between 10 to 20 degrees above of average but that certainly won't last because by the time we approach monday we're gonna see that jet stream did move in so it um let's take a look at how this storm system will form so if i'm um, going back to thursday to friday time frame we see that there's gonna be a trough moving through the midwest it's mainly gonna be a rain vent thanks to a strong amount of ridging and a southerly flow we're seeing so you don't need to worry about any snowfall unless you're maybe in the extreme northern portions on um, north and western portions of the midwest places like western Nebraska and maybe the higher elevations of Colorado could get involved with some snowfall but not much more outside of that it's just going to be too warm throughout the east um the eastern portion of the U.S. but um what's interesting is that on the back side of this storm system there's going to be a low that's going to be located right over the four corner states and eventually there's going to be a trough that's going to dip down and it's going to converge with this low right over the four corner states for this storm to intensify quite a bit and it'll enhance the instability for a pretty significant winter storm to develop right around the Tuesday time frame. So in terms of who would see snowfall, we could maybe see snowfall as far south as Texas. I wouldn't rule that possibility out. But of course, look at the forecast hour. I'm going at 165 hours out. So this is beyond the six day um, point, which means that there's still this forecast is certainly still subject to change. We're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how strong northerly winds will be, how far that cold, um, how far south that cold air will be, and that still has yet to be seen. But it seems like there's just enough cold air for this storm system to become quite powerful. Brings heavy snowfall right over Tennessee. Potentially Nashville could get involved in this if we do see enough cold air. Same goes for Kentucky, going into West Virginia, Maryland, and going into Pennsylvania. And like I said, the Interstate 95 corridor cities could all get involved. Now, let's take a look at the snowfall forecast from the GFS model. So, I'm taking a quick look at that. Um, it seems to be showing me the rainfall map um let me show you guys a snowfall map because i'm sure that is what you guys are wondering the most here um in the northeast as the snowstorm approaches so we see that the gfs model if it were completely correct you'd see around 6 to 12 inches of snowfall right over west virginia extending into the por uh, eastern portions of kentucky and the northeastern portions of um of tennessee and moving a little bit further northward we see that you could still see three to six inches of snowfall over the interstate 95 corridor cities like washington dc baltimore philadelphia new york city all get involved in boston is right on the border between receiving no snowfall to maybe a heavier amount of snowfall um so it should be a fairly close forecast and depending on the trajectory of this storm system that could mean you see a little bit more snowfall a little bit for a northward if this were to take a track for a northward but that would also mean that if 
we were to see a track for northward, the areas closer to Interstate 95 corridor cities or closer to the coast might see less snowfall and more of a rain event. That's certainly in the possibilities as well when we're talking about a forecast that's this far out. So I definitely want you guys to stay tuned to this. It's still a little bit too far out to say for certain what's going to happen, but I, I will say at the very least there's going to be a jet stream dip it will there will be temperatures below average next week we're just going to need to see how significant that jet stream dip will be because the gfs model is forecasting a jet stream dip that's going to be powerful enough to be able to enhance the instability to strengthen to um, develop this storm system but if we were to take a look at the european model scenario on the flip side the european model does not agree with that scenario the european model um, believes that this storm system uh, um, won't have enough instability to really strengthen much and be much of a much of a major snow threat for the northeast so moving forward at least for the next five days the forecast should be fairly similar to a gfs model but there's going to be quite a bit of a difference with this jet stream dip you see while the european model does agree like the gfs model there will be some type of jet stream dip by the time we approach a weekend and it's early next week it disagrees with how far south that jet stream will dip and mainly it's due to the fact that this um storm system or this trough right here is a little bit weaker than what the gfs model is forecasting which means that the northerly winds will be weaker and the northerly winds would be the main catalyst that would push that cold air towards the united states to enhance that instability and with a weaker storm system that uh that catalyst won't be there to push the arctic air further southward so as a result we don't see, we do see a decent amount of convection a decent amount of instability but not enough for that significant winter storm to develop as we primarily see snow showers over portions of the great lakes like michigan ohio extending into the interior northeast like upstate new york you um, headed into vermont new hampshire and maine but nothing for the coastal northeast in this scenario so either way the computer models do bring some sort of snowstorm to the northeast but uh, they definitely disagree regarding the trajectory as well as the strength of this storm system. This storm system does become quite strong, but well to the north of the Interstate 95 corridor cities to bring any snowfall right up along the more populated areas of the northeast. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how far south this jet stream will dip. So let's say um, to give you guys a better indication of what I'm talking about, the 500 millibar height anomaly definitely exemplifies this a little bit better than the precipitation map so here's a jet stream dip and we see that it um we do see temperatures below average and the jet stream dip is quite significant but not significant enough to pull this low pressure system that would be located over the four corner states towards the trough to really enhance the instability and lower the pressure along the surface for a major winter storm to develop we're gonna need to see that jet stream dip um further southward for me to be more confident of a major northeast snowstorm and potentially uh, an ohio valley snowstorm i'm not disregarding that possibility either since we're still very far out with the forecast but comparing that to the gfs models scenario when it comes to the 500 millibar height anomaly the gfs model um is forecasting that the jet stream dip um will be a little bit more significant will dip down further southward which means that places like maybe the southern midwest could get involved with some snowfall maybe oklahoma and texas um but more importantly that would enhance instability for a significant winter storm to develop so i'll keep you guys updated once we get a little bit more certainty with the forecast but i do expect at least some sort of snowfall to occur right over the northeast and the great lakes in terms of the temperatures this week, however, to give you guys a better indication of how much more above average of temperatures you should see um, throughout the United States. So, you like I said, you should see temperatures anywhere between 10 to maybe 25 degrees above average over the next week. As it's going to be very warm, it's going to feel very spring-like, you're definitely going to want to enjoy the outdoors i know for a lot of us while it's been a dry winter i'm sure you guys are ready for the warmth ready to go outside without a coat on i'm certainly ready for that and certainly excited this week to see those warmer temperatures hovering at least here in northern new jersey right around the 60s and 70s thanks to this big ridge moving through and it should be rather dry as well it won't be one of those um storm systems that'll bring that'll bring warmer temperatures but be a little bit too wet and humid um for it to be enjoyable like we typically see during warm winter days it won't be like that 
um, as it's likely going to be very sunny and very warm throughout the East Coast. So you definitely want to enjoy it this week because we're going to be in for a rude awakening by the time we approach a weekend and into the early part of next week. Once this pretty significant jet stream bit moves through where temperatures should fall off a cliff where, especially in the Southeast, where you could see temperatures anywhere between 10 to 20 degrees above average, where you could see temperatures maybe drop down to the 50s in a lot of areas in Texas. Same goes for Louisiana and Mississippi. As, as um, high High temperatures, not even low temperatures, just as high temperatures, you could see temperatures that are hovering closer to the 50s, which is definitely well below average for you guys. And we're going to feel very winter-like again, especially if we do see the snowstorm come through the northeast. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, the temperatures should rise up back again right um, temporarily right around the Friday time frame before I do expect another significant jet stream dip um, by the time we approach the April time frame. Another thing I want to point out that could indicate that we could be in for a more snowy pattern for the eastern U.S. Um, take, um, take a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation. We see that we're going to be deep in the negative phase, especially as we approach a week of March 20th, which could enhance the possibility of not only colder temperatures, but a more significant slow storm moving through. So definitely don't get, um, get completely um, ready for the spring just yet as we could potentially see another major winter storm out of this negative oscillation and it could continue on for the rest of spring so don't underestimate the possibility of a winter storm impacting your area no matter how warm it gets this week because we all know the weather changes very quickly but that's it for now guys and i thank you guys for watching make sure to like if you do enjoy this video um and i hope you guys all have a great day